The Mozilla Firefox logo is a fox embracing the planet. The original browser's logo was a phoenix bird reborn from its flames designed in 2002. Back then, the browser was named Mozilla Firebird. Two years later, they changed the name to Firefox. It's the English nickname for the red panda. It's a rare and protected animal from Asia. There's a bear standing on its hind legs hidden within the famous Toblerone logo. The mountain-shaped chocolate bar was created in Bern, the Swiss capital, by Emil Baumann and Theodore Tobler. It's nicknamed the City of Bears. It has a bear featured on its coat of arms. That's why this animal is featured in the image of the Matterhorn Mountain that inspired the logo. The image of a happy girl in Wendy's logo was inspired by the daughter of the fast food chain's creator, Dave Thomas. Wendy is her nickname. If you look closer, you'll notice her collar spells out the word mom. Whether intentional or not, it became something to mean a homely feel the restaurant gives its guests. 941, set as the time in iPhone's ads, isn't a random choice of numbers. In 2007, Steve Jobs first introduced the iPhone to the public after a 41-minute presentation at exactly 9.41 a.m. The first Apple logo was designed in 1976 and featured Sir Isaac Newton sitting under a tree with an apple about to fall on his head. It seemed too complex and unclear to many, so Steve Jobs wanted it replaced. The designer of the new logo, Rob Yanoff, made it an apple we all know today. He was most likely inspired by the original logo, but wanted to make it more simple. He added the bite so that no one would confuse it with a cherry, a peach, or any other round fruit with a stem. Without realizing it, he added a fun pun to the logo. Bite seems very much like the computer term. Toyota's logo symbolizes the merge of the hearts of customers in the company. Two overlapping ovals stand for T for Toyota in the steering wheel. The outer oval is for the world embracing Toyota. The background space represents the infinite values of the company. Great quality, value beyond expectation, the joy of driving, innovation and integrity and safety, the environment and social responsibility. Life insurance for Apollo 11 astronauts cost a fortune since the mission was so risky and unpredictable. The astronauts couldn't afford it so they signed hundreds of covers that their families could sell to fund some big expenses in case anything went wrong. Snickers Candy Bar was created by Frank Mars, founder of Mars Inc. It was inspired by an already existing snack made of nougat, peanut, and caramel, and named after Mars's family horse. Until 1990, they called it a marathon candy bar in the UK. As soon as they switched the name to Snickers there, it went from the number one selling candy bar in Britain to the number three. When NBC's logo was developed, color televisions were revolutionary gadgets. The logo with a rainbow of colors points it out. The peacock illustrates the phrase, as proud as a peacock. It was meant to show they were proud of their new color system. The six different colors of the feathers represent the six different divisions of NBC. The yellow arrow in the Amazon logo that starts at A and ends at Z shows you can buy anything from them, from A to Z. It also looks like a smile, symbolizing the happiness of their customers. The original name of the business was not Amazon, but Cadabra Inc. Jeff Bezos experimented with different names for his website as well, and one of them, Relentless.com, still redirects to Amazon. Papa John's Pizza CEO, John Schnatter, started his business in a broom closet in a bar he co-owned with his dad in Indiana in 1984. Over the years, it has grown to the third largest pizza chain in the world. With 5,500 restaurants in 49 countries, Baskin Robbins has 31 different flavors, and the letters B and R in the logo hide this number. The B curve stands for three, and the stem of the R stands for one. You can visit the first website ever created, called the World Wide Web Project, even today. It went live in 1991 and now serves as a historical archive about the World Wide Web. It doesn't have a single picture, just text. The web itself was invented by Tim Berners-Lee, a British scientist working at CERN, 
the European Organization for Nuclear Research in 1989. The first product ever scanned at a supermarket was a 10-pack of Wrigley Juicy Fruit Gum in 1974 in Troy, Ohio. The barcode was invented and patented back in 1952, but the idea only took off when its inventor started working for IBM. Until then, grocery clerks had to put a price sticker on every item, and cashiers had to read those tags and type the price by hand. The Quicksilver logo is a customized version of the Great Wave off Kanagawa, a famous wood print by Japanese artist Hokusai. When Quicksilver expanded their business and started a woman's brand, Roxy, they mirrored their logo so that one looks like a heart. Until 2010, rural broadband internet was slower than carrier pigeons. In a speed test, they let pigeons with USB sticks fly from a Yorkshire farm to cover the distance of 50 miles. They finished the race an hour and a quarter later. By this time, only 24% of a 300 megabyte file had been uploaded. Picasa lets you organize and view your images online and its logo is more than a simple colorful camera shutter. The white space in the middle forms a house, meaning it will be a safe home for your photos. It also has a house or casa in its name, and P stands for pixels. Letters L and G in the LG logo form a human face. L is the nose and G represents the rest of it. They call it the face of the future. And the idea was to give the brand some human elements and make it friendlier. Many tech companies test their new products in New Zealand. It's an ethnically diverse country with English-speaking people, and most importantly, it's so isolated, news about product failure won't spread quickly. FedEx logo might seem basic when it comes to its colors and font, but it's hiding an arrow between the letters E and X. It stands for speed, accuracy, striving for perfection, and perseverance in achieving goals. The four rings in the Audi logo represent the four companies that blended together to form it. Audi, DKW, Porsche, and Wanderer. The latter started as a bicycle repair shop. Gillette Company, famous for its razors, wanted their logo to be as sharp and precise as possible. This is how they ended up with a cut between G and I that forms blade-like shapes on top of each other. Black and white colors in the logo symbolize the elegance, purity, prestige, and excellence of the products. Some people have a fear of technology, aka technophobia. Now it mostly has to do with complex new devices like computers, but it has its roots back in the time of the Industrial Revolution. It began in the 18th century when workers were afraid new machines would take their jobs. Google rents goats from a special company in California to mow their lawns. They bring about 200 goats to Google headquarters at Mountain View. It takes them around one week to eat all the unnecessary grass and fertilize the land. The founders of Domino's were originally planning to add a dot to the Domino's in the logo for every new place they opened. But it was growing way too fast and too big for that, so they decided to keep just three dots for the three original locations. In 2004, At became the first new character to be added to Morse code for the first time in at least 60 years. It consists of the signals for A and C with no break in between, so you can spell your email in Morse code now if you ever have to. In its 150 year history, Levi's had eight logo redesigns. The first one was called the Two Horse Brand. It had a lot of detail in it. The current logo known as Batwing is over 50 years old and represents the shape of a pocket you can find on every pair of Levi's jeans. It's supposed to give a youthful yet timeless feel. Evernote app stores your notes and has an elephant for its logo because the saying goes, an elephant never forgets. And these animals do have an impressive memory. The ear on the elephant is curled over like a post-it note. The H in the Hyundai logo isn't just for the company's name. It's the outlines of two people firmly shaking hands. It's an exchange of trust between the company and its customers. The oval around the figures is a symbol of Hyundai's global expansion. The silver color symbolizes sophistication and perfection. The digital blue version reflects reliability and excellence. Lacoste got its iconic logo thanks to a bet Rene Lacoste, 
co-founder of the company and tennis player made with the captain of the French Davis Cup team. The captain promised to give Lacoste a crocodile skin suitcase if he won the match. Lacoste didn't win, but got his nickname Crocodile out of it. He had a crocodile embroidered on his tennis court blazer. When it was time to launch his apparel brand, the crocodile came in handy. Oreos are the world's most popular manufactured cookie, with over 40 billion pieces produced every year. Originally, they were sold by weight at the price of $2.35 for 9.25 pounds. A circle topped with a two-bar cross stamped on each cookie is a Nabisco logo that is a European symbol of quality. When Michael Dell started his company in 1984, he planned to turn the world on its ear with his business. That's why the E in Dell's logo is slanted. The blue color stands for loyalty, trustworthiness, confidence, and intelligence. The first mechanical alarm clock could only ring at one time, at 4 a.m. It was invented by Levi Hutchins in 1787 in Concord, New Hampshire. Hutchins designed the device to wake him up for work. The early prototype of alarm clocks was invented by the Greeks in 250 BCE. They used rising water to bring a whistle into action. Airbnb's logo isn't a bent paper clip. It's called a bellow for belonging. It's a person's head, the location symbol, a pin, and a heart for love. Together, these symbols make Airbnb's famous A. In 2006, Qatar Telecom organized a charity auction where they sold the phone number 666-6666 to an anonymous bidder for $2.75 million. It became the most expensive phone number in the world. Segway Polo is a legit sport with functional teams from all corners of the globe. It doesn't require a particular fitness level, has no age restrictions, and is gaining popularity. There are four eight-minute sections of the game, and the goal is to knock the ball into the goal using a special hammer. If you take a closer look at the Tour de France logo, you'll notice a cyclist hiding in the O, U, and R. The second hidden message here is the yellow circle, representing the stages of the race that only occur during the daytime. Phantom vibration syndrome is how you call that feeling when you think your phone is vibrating, but it isn't. If you often experience that, it might be a sign you're over-involved with your phone. Sony Vio logo symbolizes the integration of analog and digital technologies in its products. The letters V and A look like an analog wave. The letters I and O are there to resemble the numbers 1 and 0 for a digital signal or binary code. The original Xbox had edited sound bites from actual transmissions from the Apollo space missions. If you left it on the home screen, you'd eventually hear fragments of real chatter from the mission. Pinterest lets you pin stuff you find interesting to your online boards. Its logo shows exactly that. It's a pin design hidden in the letter P. Pin-shaped P's are an important part of Pinterest branding. To get people to pin more things by mimicking the action of pushing a pin into a board. Pepsi spent around $1 million to design its logo with many secret meanings. It hints at Feng Shui, the Renaissance, the Earth's magnetic field, the theory of relativity, Mona Lisa, and the Parthenon, among other things, and is supposed to serve as the key to the universe. Nintendo was founded back in 1889, long before computers, as a playing card company. They still produce those in Japan and even organize a bridge tournament called the Nintendo Cup. In 1973, a Motorola engineer made the first cell phone call in history from 6th Avenue in New York City. He was using a 2.5 pound prototype to call a rival from Bell Laboratories. There was silence at the other end of the line. The phone was almost the size of a shoebox, allowed its owner to talk for 35 hours, and needed 10 hours to recharge. The first commercial text message in history was sent on December 3, 1992 and was wishing happy holidays to the recipient, who was a Vodafone employee. Now the average number of texts sent is 6 billion per day. Apple used to have its clothing line in 1986, called the Apple Collection. They did it one year after Steve Jobs' temporary resignation. The idea was to see how far their fans would go in buying branded clothing, accessories, and lifestyle items. The horizontal lines in the IBM logo remind those times when photocopies had difficulties reproducing large blocks of solid ink. Originally, there were 13 lines in the logo, 
but then they reduced the number to eight as they had ink bleeding problems with the 13 lines in their print media. The serif on the bottom of the M has an equal sign to show they value equality. Five megabytes of data used to weigh one ton. In 1953, engineers in IBM's laboratory invented the first hard drive. The cabinet containing it weighed over 2,200 pounds and could hold just five megabytes of data. McDonald's logo isn't just a letter M, but also the symbol of the original golden arches of the restaurant chain. They realized prospective customers could see them well from the highway and would stop by. The world's first computer mouse was invented in 1964 and called XY Position Indicator for display systems. It was rectangular and made from wood with a little button on the top right. The inventor, Doug Engelbart, called it a mouse because of the cord coming from it that looked like that of a mouse. The name Mitsubishi is a combination of Mitsu, which means three, and Hishi, which means water chestnut. The Japanese use this word to denote a diamond shape. So, put together, the brand name translates as three diamonds. The shield shape of the NFL logo symbolizes the league's commitment to the highest standard of sporting entertainment. The eight stars stand for the eight divisions currently used in the NFL. The first word that has ever been autocorrected was te. To do it, you had to press the left arrow and F3. Northwest Airlines logo has an N and a W in negative spaces. The triangle in the circle is a compass that points northwest. The airlines were flying up high from 1926 until 2010 when they merged with Delta. A study from Beth Israel Medical Center in New York showed that surgeons who grew up playing video games more than three hours per week make 37% fewer errors, perform 27% faster, and scored 42% better at the test of surgical skills. The Mercedes-Benz brand is a product of merging the companies of Gottlieb Daimler and Carl Benz. Benz Company's logo that was Benz lettering, surrounded by a laurel wreath, was registered as a trademark in 1909. Daimler had a Mercedes star for a logo. When the companies merged in 1925, they got a new shared logo of Daimler's Mercedes star in Benz's laurel wreath. The star has three points that represent land, sea, and air. These are the three environments the company originally planned to dominate. Carrefour translates into English as crossroads and has a logical logo of two stylized arrows, symbolizing the different directions you can take. The logo is in the French national colors of red, blue, and white. In the white space between the arrows forms the letter C. Salvador Dali designed the Chupa Chups Lollipops logo. The artist put the existing text on a colored daisy-shaped background. He also wanted to move the logo to the top of the lollipop wrapper from the side so that it would always be intact and visible to buyers. The first ever computer virus was developed in 1971. It was named the Creeper Program and designed as a security test to see how it would spread between computers. Samsung was founded as a grocery store on March 1, 1938, which makes it 38 years and one month older than Apple, founded on April 1, 1976. The first phone was released to the public back in 1874. It took three years for it to be in the homes of around 50,000 people and another 75 years to get to the 50 million people point. It only took the radio 38 years to get to the same number, and television made it in just 13 years. The Google logo seems pretty basic when it comes to colors. There's primary red, yellow, and blue, but they also added green that interrupts the primary color scheme. It's supposed to show that Google is an innovator that doesn't do what's expected of it and is unique from other companies. Shell Oil Giant has been around since 1904, and its yellow-red logo has changed a lot over the years. The original one was a more realistic picture of a Pec-10 shell. The current logo is more stylized. Not even twins have tongue prints that are alike. The tongue is a movable and strong set of muscles that almost never gets tired. It contains anywhere from 5,000 to 10,000 taste buds. Those little white and pink bumps on your tongue aren't taste buds, but each of them does have a bunch of them inside its surface tissue. Evolution gave us taste buds so that we can stay alive. For instance, sour and bitter flavors can be a sign that you may be eating rotten food or poisonous plants. The back of the tongue is more sensitive when it comes to bitter flavors. 
which is why we can spit out bad food before we swallow it. Salty and sweet tastes tell us if foods are rich in nutrients. By the time they're 60, the majority of people lose half their taste buds. Yes, your tongue is pretty cool, and its prints can be used for biometric authentication, just like fingerprints. Each of us have a different and unique tongue print. So, if you don't want to reveal your secret identity, keep your tongue hidden. <laughs> that would be funny. Why do we even have fingerprints? Scientists had a lot of different theories, but they now believe it's because having them allows skin to stretch more easily. That prevents blisters, protects the skin from damage, and may improve our sense of touch. Humans are not the only ones with unique fingerprints. Koalas have them too. Only around 7% of people are left-handed. Left-handed people mostly chew food on the left side of their mouth, while right-handed people do so on the right. We lose almost 9 pounds of skin cells every year. Don't worry, we replace them quickly. We produce more cells than there are people living in the United States every 15 seconds. Our body is always regenerating, and we replace our skin hundreds of times during one lifetime. Yep, our body regenerates, except for our teeth. They're the only part of the body that can't heal itself. We have teeth that are similar to a shark's. Their teeth also have a thing called dentin inside of them, and theirs are just as strong as ours. Of course, theirs are sharper and bigger, but still. Teeth are part of the human skeleton, but they're not considered bones. You'll spend approximately 38 days of your life brushing your teeth. And guess what? It's possible to brush them too much. That can make them more sensitive because it wears down the natural enamel. Your left and right lungs are not the same size. The right one is bigger because the left shares its real estate with your heart. Hiccups are something almost all mammals go through from time to time, not just humans. The record was set by a man named Charles Osborne. He couldn't stop hiccuping for 68 years. Guess no one told him about the whole eating sugar trick. There's only one part of your body that doesn't get a regular delivery of blood, your corneas. They get oxygen directly from the air. Our eyes can differentiate between 10 million different colors. The muscles that help our eyes focus on something make around 100,000 movements a day. If you wanted to make your leg muscles do the same amount of work, you'd need to take a long walk, at least 50 miles. We can't all see infrared light or ultraviolet radiation. Only 1% of us can do that. And if you can see one of those, it doesn't necessarily mean you can see the other. Research says blue-eyed people all over the world may be related, or at least share a very distant ancestor. Scientists looked at blue-eyed individuals from Turkey, India, Jordan, and Scandinavia. They all had the same eye color gene sequences. They believe this trait comes from one blue-eyed person whose genes mutated around 10,000 years ago. Before that, people's eyes were just all different shades of brown. People with blue eyes are generally a bit more sensitive to pain than individuals with other eye colors. We blink about 20 times in one minute, which means we do it more than 10 million times a year. That thing about being similar to sharks, well, that goes for our eyes, too. If part of your eye gets damaged, you can replace it with a shark's. We can't sneeze with our eyes open. Try it. It's really hard to override your built-in reflexes. Eyelashes have their own life, too. One single lash lives for about 150 days before falling out. We all get goosebumps when we hear good news, our favorite song, or when it's ridiculously cold in the frozen food aisle. It's a reflex we got from our ancestors. It happens when you release adrenaline. It makes your hair stand on end and helps you look more imposing. Rawr. Scary, huh? The human brain has 100 billion neurons and a memory capacity that's equal to more than 4 terabytes, which is a lot. Your brain uses more than a quarter of all the oxygen your lungs take in, and it's mostly water, more than 75%. Stay hydrated, people. It's not true that humans use only 10% of their brain. We use much more than that, even when we're asleep. Most of our brain is constantly active. We just don't use all parts of it at the same time. Out of all the species out there, humans are the only ones who can blush. It comes from a rush of adrenaline. When you see your face turn red, 
know that your stomach is turning red too. <laughs> How weird is that? When you crack your knuckles, the sound you're hearing is tiny gas bubbles being released. There are pockets of gas trapped between your joints. So when you stretch them, they make a popping noise. Oh, so satisfying. Ah. We use 43 muscles when we frown, but only 17 when we smile. No scientists are still arguing over this one. Say cheese. An average person eats around 33 tons of food over a lifetime. That's six elephants worth. We breathe in approximately 2,900 gallons of air on a daily basis, but we can't swallow and breathe at the same time. Most people need about seven minutes to fall asleep, and we're just about the only living creatures that sleep on our backs. Randy Gardner decided to set the record for the longest period without sleep. The year was 1964, and he stayed awake for 11 days. That's 264 hours. Guess he had pretty noisy neighbors. Amongst all animals, humans are the only ones with chins. When you're thirsty, it means the water loss you're experiencing is equal to 1% of your total body weight. If it goes past 5%, you might even faint. During your lifespan, your body goes from having 300 bones to 206. Over half of all your bones are in your feet, your ankles, hands, and wrists. The biggest human bone is the thigh bone, and the smallest one is called the stirrup bone. It's inside your eardrum. Your nose can recognize a trillion different scents and remember 50,000 of them. Also, women are better smellers than men, and our sense of smell is 10,000 times more sensitive than our sense of taste. Our lungs have a surface area that's almost equal to the area of an entire tennis court. So what's up with that feeling you get when you're going over a crest on a roller coaster and your stomach jumps up into your throat? Well, the seatbelt keeps your body in place, but your stomach, intestines, and smaller internal organs get a little airtime. It doesn't do you any harm, but your nerves can't figure out what's going on. They really think your stomach has jumped all the way into your throat. We're all taller in the morning because throughout the day, the cartilage between our bones gets compressed. That makes us around one fingernail shorter by the end of each day. Nose and ears, parts of our body that never stop growing. It's mostly thanks to gravity. The veins and arteries inside your body are long enough to make two trips around the world. Blood makes up about 8% of your body weight. When you listen to music, your heartbeat syncs with the general vibe of the song. So choose wisely. Your skin is the biggest organ you have. It counts for about 15% of your total weight. Get this, you can burn more calories during sleep than when watching TV. Hmm, then what about sleeping while the TV's still on? Squirrels' teeth never stop growing, but the animals wear them down by gnawing on nuts and other hard foods. The front of the rodent's teeth is actually orange. It's because they're covered in special tough enamel. Bet you're glad you don't have that to deal with. Some bird species don't mind munching on chili peppers. That's because they can't feel the heat. Peppers burn your mouth because they contain a special chemical, capsaicin. But birds don't have the taste buds needed to feel its effects. The rhino's horn is made of hair, or at least the same protein that makes up your hair and nails. This protein is called keratin. Such a horn is kind of unique, since other animals have horns with a bony center. The woodpecker can peck the wood 20 times per second. This pace is almost too high for the human eye to notice. How much wood would a woodpecker peck if a woodpecker could peck wood? The number of pecks often reaches a total of 8,000 to 12,000 a day. A starfish does have eyes, one on the end of each of its arms. These eyes are light-sensitive groups of cells. Frogs don't need to drink water. Instead, they have an area known as the drinking patch. It's on their bellies and thighs. They use it to absorb water directly through the skin. Well, that could save some time. Most caterpillar species have around 4,000 muscles in their body, and almost 250 of them are in the head alone. Christmas tree worms are much more beautiful than you can imagine. But even though the pines look awesome, two-thirds of the worm's body is hidden in a calcium carbonite tube. And the point of this is… I don't have one. 
Narwhals famous tusks are actually their teeth that are kind of turned inside out. These unicorns of the sea have just two teeth. And in males, one of them grows right through their upper lip. Unlike your teeth, this one is tough inside and sensitive and soft on the outside. The anteater doesn't have teeth, but it's not a problem. This creature has a super long tongue. This tongue helps the animal lap up more than 35,000 termites and ants every day. Now well, that's one way to lick hunger. The flea can jump more than 200 times their body length. If humans had such an ability, they would jump as high as the Empire State Building. Woohoo! The red eyed tree frog's eggs can hatch earlier if they sense their environment isn't safe. Small animals with fast metabolism see in slow mo. This helps them escape larger creatures. Koalas' fingerprints are very, very similar to the human ones. Sometimes these animals' fingerprints even get confused at crime scenes, probably in Australia. The hippo's sweat is pink and not exactly sweat. It's a reddish, oily fluid. Its function is to not cool the body, but to moisturize the skin and protect it. This fluid also functions as an antibiotic. So, you get sunburn or cut, you can smear a hippo all over you. Polar bear skin is black, and the hairs of their coat are hollow and almost see-through. These animals have fur growing even on the bottom of their paws. This gives them a better grip on ice and protects against cold. Some species of tarantulas, some of the largest spiders in the world, can live without food for more than two years. I still think they're creepy. Platypuses close their eyes while kissing, uh, I mean swimming. They have special folds of skin covering their ears and eyes. They prevent water from getting inside. These animals' nostrils also have a watertight seal. Emus can't walk backwards, but scientists aren't sure why. These flightless birds are the only ones that have calf muscles. Emus can sprint really fast. They can also travel long distances, but they can't back up. Crocodiles can't move their tongue because it's attached to the mouth roof. It keeps the throat closed and protects the animal's airway. Water snakes, dolphins, whales, alligators, crocodiles, and turtles can drown. It'll happen if they stay underwater for too long. These animals can't breathe in the water. They can just hold their breath for a very long time. Only one species of birds can fly backwards. That's hummingbirds. Hey, go talk to the emu. These tiny birds can also beat their wings up to 80 times per second. Despite what elephant shrews look like, these small animals are more closely related to elephants than shrews. Maybe that's why they have their trademark trunk-like noses. Elephant shrews use them to munch on insects. True enough. Cats, as well as other felines, can't taste sweet things. They don't have the taste buds needed for that. Too bad, more for me. Flamingos can only eat with their heads upside down. That's why their lower bill is massive and their upper bill isn't fixed. Such an arrangement is perfect for upside-down feeding. But it's the opposite of what other birds have. It's not easy being pink. Tiger skin is as striped as their fur. That's all I have to say about that. When toucans sleep, they curl into pretty tight balls. These birds can turn their head so that their tail covers their head and the beak rests on the back. So yeah, they have a ball. The ostrich has some of the largest eyes in the animal kingdom. They're more massive than a bird's brain. Each eye is as big as a billiard ball. All clownfish get born male, but in some circumstances, they can turn into females. This change is irreversible. Unlike most fish, when seahorses mate, they do it for life. Even cuter, when the mates travel, they move side by side and often hold on to each other's tails. The male usually gets stuck schlepping the luggage. Termites never sleep. They don't need to recharge their batteries. But they can eat 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, on your house. The sloth needs up to 2 weeks to digest its food. Hey, take your time, no hurry, nothing on the schedule. Dogs' nose prints can be used for their identification. They are similar to human fingerprints and unique for each animal. Owls don't have eyeballs, 
Instead, they have eye tubes that don't move in the eye sockets. Penguins don't have external ears, but their hearing is especially sharp. Especially when they're on the lookout for polar bears. Shh, let's not tell them. Jellyfish are up to 98% water. That's why when they get washed ashore, their bodies can evaporate into the air after just a few hours. If a traffic jam happens underwater, an alligator will always give way to a manatee. Nice manners. Grizzly bears have such a strong bite that they can crush a bowling ball. So it's smart just to let them win. Giant pandas aren't picky about their sleeping spots. They usually fall asleep wherever they are, in most cases, right on the forest floor. The giant panda's newborn cubs are tiny. They weigh like a small cup of coffee and are smaller than a mouse. The red handfish can walk along the ocean floor with the help of its hands. But of course, they are not hands, but evolved fins. Really. Cats don't usually meow at each other. A study has shown the felines use this way of communication mostly to get attention from us humans. And it works. Sloths can't shiver. It's not that they're too busy digesting that two-week-old meal. Their fur is sometimes covered with algae. And when they get too hot or too cold, their metabolism shuts down. During the hard times, immortal jellyfish transform themselves back into their younger state. Once they reach the stage when they're nothing but a blob of tissue, like me, these creatures start to grow again. And this process can apparently repeat again and again. The closest living relatives of the T-Rex are chickens and ostriches. Don't turn your back. The moray eel has another set of jaws that can extend from his throat. First, the main jaws close around an unlucky sea creature. Then the additional set grabs the eel's future meal with backward-pointing razor-sharp teeth. And after that, the captured animal gets dragged back into the eel's throat. I just lost my appetite. Some species of snails have hairy shells. Thanks to these hairs, snails can better stick to wet surfaces. When humpback whales hunt, they often gather in a group and apply a bubble net tactic to catch their food. The bubbles don't let the schools of fish get away. Snow leopards can't roar like other large felines. It has to do with their less developed vocal cords. But these animals can meow growl, hiss, and even purr. Not to drift away from their group while napping, sea otters hold hands. They can also entangle themselves in giant seaweed for the same purpose. Hey, it kelps. Lions are often called the king of the prairie. I thought it was the king of the jungle. And still, up to 90% of all the hunting in the pride is done by the females. The males are in charge of protecting the territory and the pride members. And they make the delicious potato salad known as Hakuna Matator. Cats are famous for their uncanny ability to move their ears. All because kitties have 32 muscles in each outer ear. Some shark species can glow in the dark. Unfortunately, only other sharks can see this greenish glimmer. You have up to 8,000 taste buds. But your pooch has just a bit over 1,500. The blue jay can imitate other birds. Its favorite is a hawk's call. The blue jay uses it to scare away other birds from its territory. Slow lorries are insanely cute and just as treacherous. They're the only known <laughs> venomous primates. They have a gland in the crook of their inner arm. It secretes toxins that can cause unpleasant consequences in people. The heart of beast has an amazing evasion tactic. To run away from other animals, they move in a zigzag pattern. Bottlenose dolphins have names for one another. Those are specific whistles. Hey, Bob. Hey, Charlie. Hey, Dolly. Hey, boys. And thanks for all the fish. Giraffes have long, and I mean it, black tongues. Scientists suppose this color might protect the tongue from getting sunburned. Well, that's all I got. See ya. Now, with selfies taking over the social media world, phone companies had to adapt to the way people hold their phones and use their cameras. 
Apparently, most users tilt their heads slightly to the right when taking selfies. With the camera located in the left corner, it makes it easier to make sure the camera will be in line with the usual tilt of selfie takers. Ooh, genius! This allows for a more natural look, making the image look better to leave you feeling great. Cameras on the back of most phones are on the left side as well. Sorry, left-handers, this was designed for the more common right-hander. Mount Everest might be getting all the attention, but Mauna Kea in Hawaii is technically the tallest mountain in the world. Measuring over 33,000 feet from base to summit, the only thing holding Mauna Kea back from the title is that it's mostly underwater. Australia is wider than the moon. The moon has a diameter of over 2,100 miles, while Australia's diameter from coast to coast is almost 2,500 miles. While it may be wider, the moon wins with the land area – over 15 million square miles. Whew, that's huge. And all that cheese. Antididophobia is the fear that, at any point, somewhere in the world, a duck or goose may be watching you. The person isn't necessarily afraid that the duck or goose will get too close to them or even touch them. They just don't like the feeling of being watched. It was first described in a comic strip to show how anyone can be afraid of anything. Anything can be a phobia. A duck just watching my every move would certainly give me the heebie-jeebies. I might just quack up. Crows are pretty good at recognizing people's faces and have even been found to remember people for a long time. This could be a good thing or a bad thing, depending on how nice you are to them. You don't want to come across a crow that's holding a grudge against you. You probably can't tell which crow is which very easily, so it might be better to play it safe and just give them all a little wave. In the city of Yoro in Central America, they have an annual event known as the Reign of Fish. Not that the locals get a choice for it anyways. Every year in May or June, a torrential rainstorm rolls through town, leaving a mass of fish flopping around in the streets. The phenomenon is believed to be caused by water spouts or water tornadoes, which drop the fish far from home. Seafood delivery for free? Yes, please. A photon, the most basic part of light, takes thousands, maybe millions of years to travel from the sun's core to its surface. But it only takes 8 minutes and 20 seconds on average to get to your eye once it's at the surface. That means that the sunlight we see is very ancient, older than the human race itself. There are only four words in the English language which end in DOS. Tremendous, horrendous, stupendous, and hazardous. Sounds like the teacher's comment on my report card. A single strand of spaghetti onto your fork has a name. It's called a spaghetto. In the Italian language, an I at the end of the word means that it's plural, while an O is singular. This goes for all types, like gnocco instead of gnocchi, fettuccino instead of fettuccini, and raviolo for a single parcel of goodness. Accidentally eating one of those fruit stickers on apples, peaches, and pears shouldn't worry you at all. They can be eaten, but they aren't exactly edible. It'll just leave your body as everything else does. The glue used for them is regulated by the FDA, but it's still recommended that you wash the fruit and remove the sticker before chomping down on it. Dolphins not only have names for each other, but they'll call out for their friends specifically. Makes you wonder what names dolphins have for us when we get in the water. Hey, look, Frank! Those hairless monkeys are back in the water again! <laughs> German chocolate cake is one of the most delicious cakes out there. It's my all-time favorite. But its name has nothing to do with the country at all. Named after an American baker called Samuel German, who made the tasty treat in 1852. The Eiffel Tower can be 6 inches taller during the summer because of thermal expansion. When the iron heats up during really hot days, the iron particles expand, taking up even more space. Two planets in our solar system rotate the opposite way as the others. Venus and Uranus have this backward rotation. Venus also has the longest day of any planet in our solar system, completing a rotation every 243 Earth days. A baby puffin has the adorable name of Puffling. To feed its chick, the puffin parent will carry about 10 fish in its beak at a time. Mm. 
while you sleep, you can't smell anything. Even really, really bad or potent smells. Our taste and smell senses are cut down by 50 to 20% during flights. This is why airplane food always tastes like cardboard or too salty. Sounds like a pretty convenient excuse from the airlines to me. Look at any watch advertisements, and the time on display should be 1010. This is because of the positive effect it has. It looks like a smile, and usually the brand name of the watch is directly below the 12. Stewardesses is the longest word that is typed with only the left side of the keyboard. The word itself isn't used much anymore. Most people say flight attendant instead. Those dum-dums who call out, hey, you, are normally invited to exit the aircraft mid-flight. The longest English word is a crazy 189-819 letters long. I won't spell it out here, but it's the full name for the large protein nicknamed Titan. To say this out loud would take over three hours. So grab a snack and settle back, because we're going to be here for a while. Nah, I wouldn't do that to you. Eunoia, at six letters long, is the shortest word in the English language that contains all five main vowels. Eunoia means beautiful thinking or well-mind. It's rarely used these days in the medical field. And if you add two of them, you'd then have a para eunoia. Nah, eh, not really. Glass balls can bounce higher than rubber ones. When a rubber ball hits a surface, it deforms before returning to its original shape. And a lot of energy is lost in this process. A glass ball doesn't compress at all, keeping a lot of its energy for the bounce back up. Here's a flash. Kangaroos can't walk backward. Their long feet and heavy tail make walking impossible, forward or backward. They can move side to side with incredible agility, but jumping back is impossible because of that large muscular tail. So let's go to the hop. The loneliest creature on Earth is a whale that's been calling for a mate for a long time. Researchers identify the whale's abnormally high call decades ago, and it's believed to have never received a response. The unknown whale is called lonely because it communicates at a frequency not used by any other whale in the Pacific Ocean. How sad! Meanwhile, the lyrebird can mimic almost any sound it hears, including chainsaws. The Australian species not only copy other birds, but other animals too, like koalas and dogs. In captivity, they'll also copy artificial sounds, such as car alarms, trucks, and chainsaws. The Northern Hemisphere holds roughly 90% of the world's population. No wonder the streets are so crowded up here. The cougar goes by more names than any other animal. The cougar has been given over 80 names. The puma, mountain lion, panther, and catamount are all the same thing. Just don't confuse them with bobcats, lynxes, jaguars, or leopards. They don't appreciate that. Most people can't lick their own elbow. The length of your arm, combined with the flexibility of your joints, makes this impossible for many. Your elbow is just far enough down on your arm that you can't reach it. Go ahead, try it. I'll wait. Okay, time's up. Octopuses and squids have beaks like birds. The beak is made of the same material that our fingernails are made of, keratin. They can also fit through anything that their beak can, making them the ultimate escape artist. Not you, Houdini. There are over 31 million seconds in a year. We recently discovered this tiny chameleon in Madagascar. At less than an inch long, it's the size of a seed and could fit easily on the tip of your finger. It's nicknamed the Nano Lizard and shows how many tiny creatures could be hiding out, undiscovered, away from the eyes of scientists and researchers. 11 plus 2 equals 13, of course. And 12 plus 1 equals 13. The 13 letters that make up these phrases equal each other in more ways than one. They are actually anagrams of each other. Wow. Anagrams, homonyms, and antidophobia. That's a mouthful, but not as sweet as my German chocolate cake. Hey, I'll take seconds. 
A recent study suggests the universe is similar to your brain, only at a much, much larger scale. The brain's neural network contains about 86 billion neurons. The observable universe has at least 100 billion galaxies. Both galaxies and neurons have a similar structure. It's a complex web of nodes linking up long thread-like fibers. But in each of these systems, the fibers make up a mere 30% of the total mass, and the remaining 70% are either water in the brain or dark energy in the universe. The ways that galaxies and webs of neurons connect with one another are surprisingly similar. In both cases, the process follows the same physical principles. At the same time, some researchers claim the resemblance between the brain and the universe is only superficial. Your mind perceives tiny details and joins them, and then it comes up with a conclusion that has nothing in common with reality, like the brain is a mini-universe. In billions of years, the universe is likely to expand so much that we won't be able to see any stars in the sky. To turn Earth into a black hole, you'd have to squeeze it until it was the size of a marble. And if you wanted the sun to become a black hole, you'd have to compress it until it's no more than four miles across. A starburst galaxy is a galaxy that's forming tons of new stars at breakneck speed. It usually happens after two galaxies merge into one. While Earth has only one natural satellite, Jupiter is surrounded by at least 79 moons. In the universe, there are not only dwarf planets, but also dwarf galaxies. They have from 1,000 to a few billion stars. For comparison, the Milky Way galaxy is made up of 250 to 400 billion stars. A supermassive black hole 250 million light years away from Earth hums the deepest sound ever detected from any object in the universe. It's one quadrillion, which is one with 15 zeros, times deeper than what the human ear can hear. Planet Kelt 9b is 670 light years away from Earth. It's an ultra-hot Jupiter. Those are giant, scorching hot planets with a mass similar to that of Jupiter. On Kelt 9b, the heat is so great on the day side of the planet, it tears molecules apart. Any liquid floating in outer space forms itself into a sphere. It also happens in low Earth orbit. Our home Milky Way galaxy is more than 105,000 light years across. All the planets of the solar system would fit between Earth and the Moon with some space to spare. Black holes spaghettify things. It happens when something gets past the point of no return. Then the black hole's gravitational pull starts to stretch this object in one direction and squeeze in another. The first celestial body that astronomers identified as a spiral was the Whirlpool Galaxy. Its long arms are made of gas and stars, and everything is sprinkled with fine space dust. When you're on Earth, you can only see 5% of the universe. A star coming too close to a black hole can be torn apart by its gravitational force. WASP-12b is a giant planet 1,400 light years away from Earth. It's made up mostly of gas. Unfortunately, the planet is doomed. It orbits too close to its parent star. In about 10 million years, WASP-12b will be swallowed by its greedy sun. Our Milky Way galaxy and the Andromeda galaxy, its closest neighbor, are going to meet in a bit less than 4 billion years. When they collide, they'll form one huge elliptical galaxy. One of Saturn's smaller moons, Enceladus, reflects almost 90% of the sun's light. It makes the moon one of the brightest objects in the solar system. But since it reflects sunlight instead of absorbing it, the temperatures on Enceladus's icy surface drop to negative 330 degrees Fahrenheit. The highest mountain in the solar system is Olympus Mons on Mars. It's three times as high as Mount Everest, 
If you were standing on top of Olympus Mons, its slopes would be hidden by the planet's curvature. In our solar system, Mercury and Venus are the only two planets without moons. Scientists who are planning to send droids to Mars want to load the machines with lots of heavy equipment. The droids will also be built from stronger materials, all because of the relatively low gravity on the red planet. Everything on Mars is almost three times lighter than on Earth. Pluto's largest moon is half the size of the dwarf planet itself. This makes Charon, that's the moon's name, the largest known satellite relative to its parent size. There are three golf balls on the moon. They were launched during the Apollo 14 mission. Mathematicians claim white holes might exist, even though scientists haven't found one yet. If you came across a white hole, you wouldn't be able to enter it from the outside. But you'd see light and matter escaping from within. On our planet, one full rotation takes one day. But the sun is so enormous that it needs 25 to 35 Earth days to make one rotation. The moon is not a perfect sphere. It's shaped more like an egg because of the Earth's gravity. Spacesuits protect astronauts from huge temperature differences during spacewalks, from negative 250 degrees Fahrenheit to positive 250 degrees Fahrenheit. A neutron star gets born after a supernova collapses. After birth, it rotates extremely fast, about 60 times per second. But this rate can sometimes grow up to 600 times per second. In 2007, astronomers started to receive ultra-bright and ultra-strong radio signals. Named fast radio bursts, they were coming from somewhere billions of light years away. When astronauts are in space, they often see random flashes of light. They occur when cosmic rays hit the optic nerve in the eye. If you traveled around Pluto's equator, it would be the same distance as walking from Rome to New York City. If you visited GJ504b, a planet located a mere 57 light years away from Earth, you'd see that the planet is glowing. It's because of the heat left after its formation. The planet's color is a dull magenta, like a dark cherry blossom. Jupiter has the shortest day of all the planets in the solar system. It lasts just 9 hours and 55 minutes. Because of its fast rotation, Jupiter isn't a perfect sphere. It's a bit flattened. Venus has more volcanoes than any other planet in the solar system. There are at least 1,600 of them on the planet's surface, but most of them are extinct. Mercury has wrinkles. When its iron core was cooling, the planet's crust contracted. It made the surface of the planet uneven. Nuclear pasta found inside neutron stars is believed to be the strongest substance in the universe. These noodles of neutrons can be 10 billion times stronger than steel. Some astronomers believe black holes might have no event horizon, aka the point of no return. Instead, there might be the apparent horizon. It can only trap stuff for some time. Later, matter or energy escapes, but in a different form. Each Apollo mission needed 15 spacesuits. Each member of the three-person main crew needed three suits. One was for training, the second for flight, and there was also a backup suit, in case something went wrong with the flight suit. And each of the three members of the backup crew had two spacesuits, one for training and one for flight. Scientists believe Mercury might still have a partially molten core. It could explain why the planet has a magnetic field, even if it's just 1% as strong as Earth's. Dust storms on Mars are the most severe in the whole solar system. They can be raging for months on end. On planet Kepler-16b, which is 245 light years away from Earth, not one, but two suns set over the horizon. The planet is as massive as our Saturn, but has a higher density. It takes 45 minutes to put on a spacesuit. 
After it's done, an astronaut needs another hour to adapt to new conditions. Earth grazing fireballs are bright meteors that enter the Earth's atmosphere, but then leave it again. Triton, one of Neptune's moons, orbits the planet backward. It's the only big moon of any known planet to do so. Triton is also gradually getting closer to Neptune. Experts think that, eventually, the moon will be pulled apart by Neptune's gravity. And then, it'll form a ring around the gas giant. Dwarf planet Haumea, which is further from Earth than Neptune, is truly bizarre. It's orbiting in the Kuiper Belt, a donut-shaped ring of ice objects circling the Sun. Haumea has two moons, a weirdly elongated shape, and a day that lasts four Earth hours. But the coolest thing, the dwarf planet is surrounded by incredibly thin rings. They're likely the result of an ancient collision. It takes Neptune almost 165 Earth years to make one full orbit around the Sun. In other words, since the gas giant was discovered in 1846, it's only circled the Sun once. You'd need a drop of liquid, a state-of-the-art laser 3D printer, and a couple of hours of work to make the tiniest fidget spinner ever. Its width will be smaller than that of your hair strand. At least researchers at Oak Ridge National Laboratory managed to do just that. A double-stuffed Oreo cookie aren't double-stuffed, in fact. A math teacher weighed 10 regular Oreos, 10 double-stuffed Oreos, 10 mega-stuffed Oreos. Turns out, double-stuffed Oreos are only 1.86 stuffed Oreos. Chipotle peppers aren't some special type of pepper. They're good old jalapenos. Dried and smoked jalapeno is Chipotle. In its gaseous form, oxygen is colorless and doesn't have any odor. But when it's liquid or solid, this substance looks pale blue. After being caught by a black hole, a star gets ripped apart by its enormous gravitational forces. Some parts of the star's remains hurtle into the black hole. The rest, in the form of a huge jet of plasma, is ejected with such force that it travels hundreds of light years away. Not so long ago, scientists decided the dino's family tree had to be redrawn for the first time in 130 years. Apparently, Two species of dinosaurs had to be grouped together from the very beginning. Those were the lizard-hipped meat-eaters like T. rex and bird-hipped vegetarians such as the Stegosaurus. A camel can drink up to 30 gallons of water in a bit more than 10 minutes. This water is stored in the animal's bloodstream. As for its fatty hump, it provides the camel with nourishment when there's little food around. Some sea animals, like salmon or turtles, use our planet's magnetic field to find their way home. Your lungs not only help you breathe, but they also produce blood cells. These cells are responsible for the clotting which stops bleeding. The lungs make more than 10 million of these tiny cells per hour. Only two letters never appear on the periodic table. Those are J and Q. Spin a ball when you drop it and it'll fly through the air while falling. This phenomenon is known as the Magnus Effect. You can see it at work in different sports, for example tennis or baseball. Anatidaphobia is the fear that at any point, somewhere in the world, a duck or a goose may be watching you. The person isn't necessarily afraid that the duck or goose will get close to them or even touch them. They just don't like the feeling of being watched. It was first described in a comic strip to show you how anyone can be afraid of anything. Anything can be a phobia. A duck just watching my every move would certainly give me the heebie-jeebies. I might just quack up. Your favorite fruit candies may be shining because they're covered with carnauba wax. Many fruits, especially apples, have a thin layer of this wax too. Not only can it make the candies and fruit appear glossy, but it also makes your car shine. Peaches and nectarines seem different, but in fact, they're pretty much the same fruit. If the fluffiness gene is dominant, we get peaches. If not, we get smooth nectarines. Crows are pretty good at recognizing people's faces and have been found to remember people for a long time. 
This could be a good or a bad thing, depending on how nice you are to them. You don't want to come across a crow that's holding a grudge against you. You probably can't tell which crow is which very easily. So it might be better to play it safe and just give them a little wave. In the city of Yoro in Central America, they have an annual event known as the Reign of Fish. Not that the locals get a choice for it anyways. Every year in May or June, a torrential rainstorm rolls through the town, leaving a mass of fish flopping around in the streets. The phenomenon is believed to be caused by water spouts or water tornadoes, which drop the fish far from their home. Seafood delivery for free? Yes, please. A single strand of spaghetti onto your fork has a name. It's called a spaghetto. In the Italian language, an I at the end of a word means that it's plural, while an O is singular. This goes for all types, like gnocco instead of gnocchi, fettuccino instead of fettuccini, and raviolo for a single parcel of goodness. Water can freeze and boil at the same time. This is called the triple point. That's when a substance can be solid, liquid, and gaseous at the same time. But there's only one pressure temperature that can make it possible. We're used to ranch dressing being white, but in reality, producers usually add titanium dioxide to make it as white as your sunscreen. Oh, sunscreen producers add some titanium dioxide to their products too. Same with Caesar and blue cheese dressings. Our moon used to have an atmosphere. Several volcanic eruptions happened on Earth's natural satellite around 4 billion years ago. They released immense volumes of gas, trillions of tons. It was so much that the gas didn't have enough time to escape into space. That's how an atmosphere was formed. Cold water heats up faster than hot. The speed of this process depends on the temperature difference between the liquid and its surroundings. That's why cold water needs less time to absorb heat, but it doesn't mean it'll boil faster than hot water. Zealandia is a drowned continent in the Pacific Ocean. It's often described as a continental fragment or a microcontinent. Its area is almost 2 million square miles, about half as big as the US. It went underwater about 23 million years ago. New Zealand is Zealandia's largest part that remains above sea level. People are still evolving. Scientists have been tracking several millions of human anomalies. It turns out some harmful genes are slowly but surely getting filtered out of human DNA. Stars look as if they're twinkling because of the turbulence in Earth's atmosphere. It makes the light from the stars move in a different direction before reaching our eyes, and this looks as if the light is shaking. It takes water 1,000 years to complete its continuous journey around the world. The whole process is known as the Global Ocean Conveyor Belt. Bismuth is a brittle, shiny white metal with a pink tinge. If you melt it and then let it cool really slowly, it'll form iridescent cubic crystals. Those Skittles and M&M candies are colored with beetles. Red food dye is made of carmine which is made with cochineal beetles. Red lipsticks are made with these beetles too. The rocks, metals, and other minerals and things that make up the planet are packed into the ground more tightly in certain places than in others. This has surprising consequences. Gravity varies slightly depending on where you are. How high up you are also has an effect, so if you're at the top of Mount Everest, you'd also weigh slightly less. Don't look down. One scientist has a theory that a substance existed in ancient microbes before chlorophyll, that's the thing that makes plants green, evolved on Earth. This substance reflected sunlight as red and violet colors, which combined to make purple. If true, the young Earth may have been teeming with strange purple-colored critters before all the green stuff appeared. Apples taste better when they're sliced because they're exposed to oxygen. It activates the enzyme called polyphenol oxidase, responsible for ripening and visible browning. The same thing happens when you hit an apple. The oxygen enters the apple through tiny cracks and it starts to ripen. Are you into white chocolate? Well, it's actually not even close to real chocolate. 
It's basically a mixture of sugar, milk, vanilla, and cocoa butter. Cocoa butter isn't enough for chocolate. It should contain chocolate liquor or powder. The only product that never expires even if you don't store it in the fridge is honey. It has a low pH and lots of sugar. That's why organisms that cause spoiling can't live in honey. If two pieces of the same kind of metal touch in space, they bond and get stuck together. It doesn't happen on Earth because water and air keeps pieces apart. People are more honest when they're tired. That's why most confessions are made during late-night conversations. Firefighters usually extinguish flames with wet water. It's water mixed with special wetting agents. These are chemicals that help water soak into objects and spread everywhere more easily. The sun is an average-sized star, and still it could fit 1,300,000 Earths. The star is also 333,000 times as heavy as our planet. People have been able to spell their emails in Morse code since 2004. That's when a new symbol, at, was added to the code for the first time. The character is actually called a comet and consists of the A and C signals with no break in between. You ever wondered why potato chips have those yummy, crunchy waves? Hmm, imagine you're with friends watching a film and you're eating chips. Would you prefer to dip non-ruffled chips or a ruffled one? Non-ruffled ones cannot handle the weight of the sauce and break down. Bam! You have sauce all over your white t-shirt. So, ruffled chips win. Ruffled chips also give you a better mouthfeel. Potato chips have a prominent oil taste, which decreases the potato taste. And you might have fingers oil covered. Where's the fun in that? So, what do you prefer, ridges or regular potato chips? Barcodes made our lives so much easier. But do you know how they work? Zebra lines are the keys here. Barcodes are read using a scanner. The scanner has a laser that detects the pattern. The laser reads the barcode. The barcode absorbs some light and the rest is reflected. The computer can make sense of those dots, lines, and numbers on a barcode. Imagine black and white lines as zeros and ones. Black observes the light and white reflects it. This rule applies here. Black parts of the ones and white parts that reflect the lights are zeros. The scanner sees the white sections, not the black parts. Post-its are our friendly reminders to visit the dentist or a scheduled meeting. Be sure to hang them on the wall firmly. We've been using post-it notes wrong this whole time. You're not supposed to peel it off from the bottom because this creates a crease in the paper. The note won't hold on to the surface for long. Take it off from the side. It'll stick more powerfully. Cloud-like and sweet. The one and only cotton candy. It's irresistible, especially for young people. Too much sugar is bad for the teeth. Everyone's heard this phrase from their dentist. Surprise, the inventor of cotton candy is a dentist. So, cotton candy was invented in 1895 by John C. Wharton, a candy maker, and William Morrison, a dentist. They named their product Fairy Floss. It's a cool name, by the way. They sold thousands of cotton candy at the St. Louis World's Fair in 1904. Cotton candy is still with us, showing up in amusement parks and dentists still care for people with tooth decay. Some things never change. Do you love a lollipop? Why are there tiny holes in it? Those two holes in a lollipop stick may be used as a simple whistle. But they're there to hold the candy in place. The stick is dipped in the liquid syrup. It flows into the holes, solidifies, and surrounds the stick. A life-changing invention is a refrigerator, but not everybody knows it has a dark story behind its door. The Refrigerator Safety Act was launched in August 1956 to prevent young people from being trapped inside a household refrigerator. The refrigerators used to have an external latch that would shut the refrigerator door when it was not in use. It can only be opened from the outside. You can relax. After this regulation, Household refrigerators were manufactured to be opened from the inside. Moving on from the kitchen to the bathroom. Using the toilet while scrolling down the Instagram feed is taken for granted. 
Guess what? More people in the world have phones than toilets. According to a UN report, billions of people lack access to a toilet, especially areas in South Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa. The number of mobile phone owners outnumber those with proper plumbing and sanitized toilets. Also, scientists have found that cell phones carry 10 times more bacteria than most toilet seats. So yeah, you might want to sanitize your phone after watching this video. Do you use FaceTime or Skype to talk to each other worldwide? It could be for a chat, a meeting, or something else. The webcam technology was born with a very reasonable goal, though. In 1993, researchers at the Computer Science Department at the University of Cambridge set up a system to see if the coffee pot was empty or not. Yes, you heard it right. Researchers needed coffee to fuel their brains, as many of us do. They get up from their chairs, go to the coffee pot, and find it empty. Instead of making sure that someone makes a fresh coffee, they wired up a system. The system would stream the images of the room where the coffee pot was kept. At that time, it was three pictures taken per minute. It's more than enough to see if the pot has coffee in it or not. Thanks to the researchers for not getting up from their chairs. And for another tiny thing, coming up with this brilliant idea. Do you buy white eggs or brown eggs? What's the difference besides the color? Since brown eggs tend to cost you more, you might think that something in them makes the prices a bit higher. Nope, the color of the eggshell doesn't affect its nutrition or quality. Both eggs are healthy. Brown eggs cost more because the hens that lay them need more feed. It's more pricey to raise them than the white egg hens. The cost is reflected onto the consumer. There is a hole at the handle of some kitchen pots and pans. We mostly use this hole to place the kitchen utensil vertically on a cabinet door. They have a secondary use. Imagine you're cooking multiple dishes to make a feast for the family. The kitchen counter is full of stuff. You have a hard time finding a place for the gravy sauce spoon. You can place the spoon in the hole on the edge of the saucepan handle. It will stay there safely until you decide to stir the sauce again. Not every spoon fits into the hole it might easily slide to the floor. Better to have a test run where the spoon is clean. Imagine you have a takeaway of noodles with an extra topping on your way home. You recently moved and all the plates are in the boxes. You struggle with this noodle box. The toppings are stuck at the bottom. The sauce didn't mix evenly either. We've missed out on an easier way to eat from the takeout boxes. They can be flat and serve as plates. You take the edges of the paper out and open it up. There you go. Now you have a plate. The best part is you don't have to clean it up afterwards. Did you know that a tomato is not a veggie, but a fruit? So is an avocado. Watermelon is actually a berry. There's more to that. Peanuts are not in the nuts family. They're different from almonds and cashews. Peanuts grow pods under the soil. They're harvested like potatoes. Their upper parts are like bushes. These tasty ciders are not classified as nuts since they grow under the ground, not on a tree. They get pulled up from the soil like carrots. Next time you eat peanuts in a friend circle, you can mention this new fact you heard. Or it can be an icebreaker when you see someone eating peanuts. Classifying food as fruit or a vegetable is a tricky business. Do you know who invented t-shirts? In 1904, the Cooper Underwear Company prepared an ad and introduced its new product with before and after photos. It was referred to as an undershirt. The slogan was, no safety pins, no buttons, no needle, no thread. As the name revealed, they were worn under the clothes. One day, it was announced that sailors should wear undershirts with no buttons under their uniforms. T-shirt love spread like pollen at a park on a spring day. Soon, thousands of men started wearing them. Though t-shirts go back to the 19th century, now we have all adjusted to the comfort of our cozy t-shirts. Do you also wear t-shirts like the sailors? The Empire State Building's tower was designed to serve as a docking station for dirigibles. At that time, people believed that these airships would become the main means of transportation in the future. The project included gangplanks, check-in and customs offices, and so on. 
But then the engineers realized that the wind up there was too strong for their plans, and they gave up on their idea. Angel Falls, the largest uninterrupted waterfall on the planet, is more than twice as tall as the Empire State Building. During the dry season, the falling water sometimes evaporates before it reaches the ground. One of the most mysterious sounds ever heard on Earth was the bloop. It occurred in 1997 and resembled the noise of marine animals. But the volume was too great for a sound produced by a living creature. The bloop continued for one minute. It started from a low rumble and then rose in frequency. Antarctica might just look like a giant field of ice, but there's actually a huge continent underneath. That means that it has volcanoes, mountains, and valleys, like any other continent. Scientists have recently discovered that the Antarctic landmass has the lowest point on the planet, as well as huge mountain ranges. If any of the numerous volcanoes were to erupt, it would melt a huge part of the surface ice and increase the spill of ice into the ocean. The sea level would rise and flood coastal areas around the world. The ocean waters would also be disrupted, putting marine life at risk, though all of these volcanoes are dormant at the moment. Each day on the South Pole lasts six months on this continent. The South Pole only has a single sunset and sunrise across an entire year. Early Earth might have been purple, not green. There's a theory that ancient microbes used molecules rather than chlorophyll to absorb sunlight. These molecules likely gave living organisms a violet tint. During the Stone Age, the entire population of Central Europe was around 1,500 people, which means they would all fit on a mid-sized cruise liner these days. Astronomers have figured out that the Milky Way weighs around 1.5 trillion solar masses, and one solar mass is the mass of our Sun. A tiny part of this weight is a supermassive black hole at the center of the galaxy and 200 billion stars. The rest is dark matter, mysterious and invisible. If all sheets of Arctic ice and glaciers melted at the same time, the sea level would rise for the height of a 26-story building. Under black or UV light, ripening bananas look bright blue. That's because of the chlorophyll that's breaking down when the fruit is ripening. Because of tectonic plate movements, the Pacific Ocean shrinks every year, and the Atlantic Ocean gets bigger by the same amount. These days, there are only two ice sheets in the world left after the planet's last ice age. The first is the Greenland Ice Sheet. The second, the Antarctic Ice Sheet, is enormous. It's the size of Mexico and the continental U.S. combined. Tsunami waves often go unnoticed. They don't rise for more than several inches above the surface until they reach shallow waters. When the ocean is deep, though, they can travel as fast as a long-distance passenger airplane. Corals that live in shallow waters produce their own protection from the sun. Without it, sunlight would harm the algae living inside them. To protect these algae, which are the main source of food for the corals, they fluoresce. This process makes proteins that act as sunscreen. Almost 90% of the volcanic activity on Earth happens in the oceans. The South Pacific has the largest concentration of volcanoes people know about. There's one volcano cluster that has 1,133 volcanic cones. All of them are active and cooped up in an area the size of New York State. The Zemchug Canyon in the middle of the Bering Sea is the largest underwater canyon ever discovered. There are more treasures and artifacts at the bottom of the ocean than in all museums in the world combined. In 1900, one of the biggest hurricanes struck near Central America and in the Gulf of Mexico. It then went as far as Florida and Texas and is considered to be the most devastating hurricane in the United States history. They first detected it on August 27th and it lasted for many days. By the time it reached the Texas coast, the storm had turned into a Category 4 hurricane. Hurricanes are categorized on wind speed and intensity using something called a Saffir-Simpson scale. There are five different categories from 1 to 5, with 1 being the weakest and 5 being the strongest. The people of Galveston had less than four days to prepare for the arriving storm that even stretched out to Oklahoma and Kansas. The Great Hurricane then made its way to the Great Plains and turned towards the Great Lakes, New England, and reached southeastern Canada. 
The storm was so bad that more than 3,600 homes were damaged, even though they were sturdy enough to withstand the storm. Given the population numbers back then, it was equivalent to hundreds of thousands of houses destroyed, if not millions. Spotted Lake, Canada They call it the most magical spot in Canada. In winter and spring, this is just a regular lake that looks like any other. But try going there in the summer when the water starts to evaporate. It'll feel as if you've entered a different world, a polka-dotted landscape with blue, green, and yellow spots. Over the summer, there are over 300 pools there, and they all look magical. Over the centuries, people believed each of them had different healing properties. Oh, and the explanation for the vibrant colors is pure science. Each of them has a high concentration of different minerals. We live inside the sun. Its atmosphere stretches far beyond its visible surface, and even though Earth is 93 million miles away from the star, it's still within reach of the sun's atmosphere. Auroras happen when charged particles from the sun get caught by Earth's magnetic field and crash into the upper atmosphere near the poles. Our planet is gradually slowing down the speed of its rotation. It happens at an unhurried pace of 17 milliseconds per 100 years. Because of this, our days are becoming longer, and still, only after 140 million years, a day on Earth will last 25 hours. Earth's southernmost continent, Antarctica, is the only the fifth largest one, but it contains almost 70% of the planet's fresh water and 90% of the world's ice. Antarctica is also considered to be a desert. Lots of rocks on Earth have a Martian origin. Scientists analyze the chemical content of some meteorites found in the Sahara Desert, Antarctica, and other places. It turned out that these rocks had arrived from the Red Planet. The largest sandcastle in the world is located in Denmark. 30 sand sculptors who created it used more than 5,000 tons of sand. To make it more durable, they added 10% of clay, together with a layer of glue. They built it to stand tall against long and stormy winters. Some photons that don't get absorbed are re-emitted, and their wavelength determines the color we see. When you expose a material to sunlight or photons of higher energy, it can damage its chromophores, which is why they won't be able to emit photons at certain wavelengths. Red materials fade in sunlight the most. Their chromophores emit red light in a way they mop up photons of the rest of the wavelengths. From 60 to 100 tons of space dust drift down to our planet's surface every day. These tiny cosmic particles are mostly released by comets, which are usually made of dust and ice. When the sun turns this ice into vapor, the remaining dust travels down to Earth. There are two sides to every story. Just like to a regular cotton pad, two different textures to be more precise. One is smooth, and you're supposed to use it for more sensitive areas of your face, for example, the eyes. The rougher side can help you remove makeup and clean your face in less sensitive areas, like the forehead. If you like having greenery in your home, you've probably noticed the flower pots have holes at the bottom. These holes are the reason your green friends live a happy life. They're extremely important for water drainage. Thanks to these holes, you'll avoid stagnant water buildup that can eventually ruin your plant. Also, thanks to those holes, roots can grow and expand beyond the limits of your pot. Have you noticed aviator sunglasses mostly have green lenses? It has something to do with their origin. First, they showed up in the 1930s. Before that, pilots had goggles to protect their eyes while they were in the air. High altitudes with glaring sun and sub-zero temperatures were a real test for their eyes. The goggles helped them with those issues, but there was another one. Since the temperature differences between the air outside and within the goggles were big, the lenses would fog up and obscure the pilot's view. So the company Bausch & Lohm came up with teardrop lenses surrounded by a light metal frame. These lenses were dark green because this tint cuts out blue light, which is also a problem for pilots when they're flying above the cloud line. Plus, green lenses also reduce glare and improve contrast and sharpness. Holes in the side of your Converse sneakers? Hmm, are those really necessary? 
Well, they allow air to enter your shoe so your feet can stay cool. You can also use them to style up your shoes and tie them in different ways, too. There are two reasons plastic bottles have grooves. First, if you're drinking cold water and it's hot outside, you'll see there's a lot of condensation on your bottle. Or maybe if you're playing some sport or working out. Your hands are sweaty and if a bottle had a smooth surface, it would be more difficult to grip it. So the ridges are there to improve your hand grip. The second reason is that because of these ridges, manufacturers can use thinner plastic. That means they need less material in overall production. And that plastic is still firm enough for the bottle to maintain its shape. Wooden coat hangers are not just there to look nice. Since they're made of cedar wood, they bring a nice scent to your closet. Plus, they repel bugs. They're also quite firm, so they come in handy for heavy clothes, such as jackets. And it's hard to damage them. So, they'll serve you longer. You may have noticed there's a colored square at the bottom of your toothpaste. These blocks mostly come in blue, red, green, and black. They are some sort of eye marks, since they help manufacturing machines at the assembly line recognize where and when to cut the toothpaste and seal the end of the tube. Some boots have loops at their top and back. Looks like a fashion statement, doesn't it? Or maybe it's something that manufacturers add for fun. But those loops actually have their purpose. With them, you can pull the shoe up when trying to wear it. Plus, you can easily hang them or use the loop for better support for the laces. Confession time! Remember those attachments your vacuum cleaner came with? Did you also put them somewhere aside and never use them again? They're actually pretty helpful when you're cleaning the house because you can use them for particular areas that are sometimes hard to reach with the regular attachment. We all know what the vegetable peeler is for, but besides peeling the skin of carrots or potatoes, you can use it for onions too. It may be faster than doing it with a knife, plus it will save you some onion tears. Some sweatshirts have something pretty specific in the neck area. A V-shaped stitch you can see in the middle of the collar. The ribbed insert, similar to the ribbing at the hem and the sleeves, would allow the owner to put the garment on more easily and it wouldn't even lose shape. The V insert would stretch so a person wearing the sweatshirt could get their head through the neck. Its purpose was also to absorb sweat. In its early versions, sweatshirts had both the back and the front of the collars. Through time, they lost the back one, and this V insert became something decorative since manufacturers started to stitch a V at the collar without using the ribbed material they had added before. Brightly colored squares or circles you see on food packages aren't an indication of vitamins, minerals, or certain flavors that food contains. And nope, it's not some secret code consumers are supposed to crack. It's actually for printing engineers. They're called process control patches or printer's color blocks. During the process of printing the food packaging, manufacturers use those colored blocks to check if the printing ink is correct. They compare the color of blocks they print to make sure the brand they print for has a consistent and recognizable quality all over the world. The majority of printers only use four colors, yellow, magenta, cyan, and black. Some printers have additional colors, such as green, orange, and violet. That's why you sometimes see multiple circles on certain packages. They test each ink color. Margins in notebooks. They're not there as some sort of a guide for taking notes and writing. Someone came up with a potential solution that was supposed to protect the written work from, well, rats. They used to be pretty common residents in people's homes. They are known for their diet, including basically anything, like paper, for example. So, people started adding wide margins as an appetizer that was supposed to keep rats full. This way, they wouldn't want to get to the main dish, the written pages. Suits have a buttonhole close to the top of the lapel. Manufacturers sew it shut so you can't open it without ruining your suit. And when you compare it to the other lapel, you see that one is completely smooth, without any clues. You won't find such an unpartnered buttonhole on a suit jacket only. Camp shirts, pea coats, and some other clothing pieces have them too. And they have to do with the history of lapels. The earliest ones showed up at the beginning of the 19th century, 
Before this, men mostly wear frocks with high collars. They would button them all the way up to the top. During hot days, they would relax the button stance, turn down the collars, and leave the top button undone. It was a relief from the swelter, plus their folded over laps would be symmetrical at the chest, and today, we recognize that as a lapel. People stopped using that buttonhole after they came up with a lapel, unless it was for some formal occasion. Like, for example, when you wanted to put a flower in there. That's why suit makers left it as a fashion feature. Tea bags. It's pretty easy to guess what they're for, but they come in handy if you have smelly feet after a long day in your shoes. Just pop tea bags, unused of course, in your shoes during the night. By the time you wake up, tea bags are going to effectively absorb all the unwanted odors. Binder clips can also have a helpful purpose besides their main one. You can clip your money to keep it together. Same is true for paper clips. If your favorite bracelet broke and you're looking for a way to hold it on, a paper clip might help. Just hook one through each end of the bracelet, twist it tightly, and your bracelet is good to go. Why is the myth dogs are colorblind so widely accepted? They do see colors, even though they have a more limited spectrum than we do. They see blue, yellow, and violet pretty well, but it's hard for them to tell the difference between orange, red, and green. So, if you want to redecorate your dog's house, maybe you should stick to purple and blue shades. Animals, plants, and humans were all actually connected and have common traits because we've all evolved from the same micro-ancestor. This would be our planet's original ancestor, LUCA. This stands for the last universal common ancestor, which is a 3.8 billion year old organism. Closing the eyes can improve your memory. Let's say you want to listen to a story and see how much you can remember. Studies show that if you close your eyes and take a 15-minute rest, you'll remember it better. A good technique for when you're studying or trying to remember some boring information. The pink corner of your eye is actually the remnant of the third eyelid. We all have this mysterious membrane. The third eyelid is way more prominent in certain mammals and birds since it protects their eyes from dust. But for humans, this tissue doesn't have any particular meaning, so scientists believe we'll eventually lose it. When potatoes are exposed to too much light, they mostly turn green, whether they're in a factory, storage, or a field. This happens because they start to form chlorophyll, a pigment that gives plants green color. So when you see green potato chips, it means they were made from one of these potatoes that were exposed to light for a longer time. But just because some green potato chips made it into the bag doesn't mean you should eat them. As it turns out, the green areas on potatoes and on chips are not good for you. Nothing's going to happen if you eat one or two of these green potato chips. But if you eat too much of a green potato, you might experience some discomfort. Despite their name, some oranges are not orange. Some initially contain large amounts of chlorophyll, which makes this citrus green-colored in the first place. As it matures and ripens, the chlorophyll slowly disappears as the fruit is exposed to cool temperatures. That's when it gets its color. But this is also why, in warm areas across the world, oranges remain green. If you've ordered something small from Amazon, like a pen, a single book, or something else, you might have got it in a box that seemed way too big for your item. And it's not an accident, nor random. It's because of their complex shipping algorithm. It takes into account the size of other packages going to the same place, as well as the size of the shipping vehicle. The small item gets a box size that will fit the space inside the vehicle together with other packages and keep boxes from sliding around. Physicist and inventor Percy Spencer discovered microwaves by accident. He was building a magnetron for some of his radar equipment. At one moment, he realized the chocolate bar he had been keeping in his pocket had begun to melt. He was curious about what was going to happen next, so he directed microwaves at eggs, which exploded, and popcorn, which popped. This is how he discovered a great tool to heat food that uses less energy than a conventional oven. In its original version, the clay-like substance we call Play-Doh today was a wallpaper cleaner. It was invented and sold for the purpose of lifting soot off of wallpaper. At the time it first showed on the market, you could only get it in an off-white color, but later they started selling it as a toy. 
the substance was produced in yellow, blue, and red. Today, you can get it in more than 50 colors. Bubble wrap had a somewhat different purpose at its beginning. It was supposed to be wallpaper. In the 1950s, when it first showed up, two engineers decided to glue two shower curtains together. That's how they trapped small bubbles of air between them. They were trying to create some sort of textured wallpaper, but it didn't take off. A couple years later, IBM had to ship some data processors and needed something to protect them, which is when the phenomenon of bubble wrap came up. One study showed that one minute of popping bubble wrap is as calming as a 30-minute massage. Why don't electric fans cool the air? You could set a thermometer in front of it and choose a turbo mode, but the temperature won't go down. In fact, the temperature might even go up if you leave the thermometer next to the working parts thanks to the electric current. A fan won't cool the air, but it will cool you or any other object with water inside. An electric fan improves air circulation in a closed space, plus it speeds up evaporation, which makes liquids, including the sweat on your skin, a bit cooler. Have you noticed pen caps have tiny holes on the top? It seems random at first, but it's actually a lifesaver. If you can accidentally swallow this cap, the hole ensures you can continue breathing because the cap won't completely block the airway. If you take a closer look at the night sky, you'll see stars come in different shapes and sizes. White is the most prevalent color, true, but they sparkle in shades of red, blue, and yellow too. But you won't see a green star. It's not that stars don't emit green light, it's just that our eyes don't see it like that. Stars vary in colors when they burn at different temperatures. The hottest stars appear blue, while the coolest stars seem to burn in red hues, but they all shine in multiple colors. They emit different light wavelengths that represent various parts of the color spectrum. We can't all perceive those wavelengths separately. We only see the dominant light wavelength, which means the dominant color. So, stars of medium heat emit green photons in most cases, but they just don't appear green. When we try to process something that generates red, green, blue, and yellow photons at once, our eyes see it as white. That's the same reason why mid-temperature stars such as our sun appear white to us. Why do we blink? To moisten and cleanse the eye, that's for sure. Every time you close your eyelids, the tear glands secrete a salty substance that sweeps over the surface of your eye. It then flushes away all those tiny dust particles and also lubricates the exposed parts of your eyeball. We usually blink every 4 to 6 seconds unless the eyes are more irritated. Then, we blink more frequently to keep them moist and clean. But not just that. Blinking also helps our brain to reset. It has to process so many things all the time, so it's fair to give it a break from time to time. So blinking rescues our brain around 15 to 20 times per minute. When we shut our eyes, we help our brain to power down and take a very short but still effective mental break. That's why we blink more when we're in the middle of a task that demands some serious mental activity. Why do we have nails? They're generally made of a specific type of protein you can find in fur, hair, claws, and hooves. It's called keratin, and unlike claws, nails are flat and wide, so they're more effective at shielding the tips of toes and fingers from potential injuries. Fingernails not only protect sensitive areas, but also provide a rigid backing, so you can take and separate small objects more easily. How would you pick up a single jigsaw piece or peel a sticker from its backing without nails? It would be almost impossible without additional tools. Apes and monkeys use their feet for such delicate tasks too. Primates have probably evolved nails because they needed help with simple tasks, such as grasping branches tightly and removing ticks. Raspberries, blackberries, strawberries, and cherries are not berries. To classify a berry, they have to have three layers. A protective outer one, a fleshy one in the middle, and finally, an inner part where you can find the seeds. Also, a plant must come from a flower with just one ovary and have two or more seeds. So, by this criteria, cranberries and blueberries are berries. Together with some more plants, you wouldn't expect to be in this category. Kiwis, bananas, watermelons, tomatoes, eggplants, and even peppers. You've probably heard your ears and nose are those body parts that never stop growing. 
This happens because the effects of skin changes and gravity. Other parts of your body change in the same ways, but you can't see it as well as you can see what's happening with your nose and ears. Now, if you were asked where your stomach was, you'd probably point to your tummy. Sorry, but that's wrong. It's actually up here, hidden behind your ribs. Your stomach has a pretty incredible capacity, being able to hold up to a half a gallon of liquids. That's a whole large bottle of Coke. It's pretty hard to estimate how much hard food you can eat because it's processed with your teeth before it ever gets to your stomach. There's definitely not enough room for a turkey, but a good-sized chicken would probably fit it in. Speaking of organs, scientists believe that the appendix will disappear eventually. Nobody really knows why we need it, but some researchers claim it might have existed to help our ancestors digest tree bark. Because it's no longer a part of our daily diet, the appendix isn't necessary and can disappear from our bodies without any consequences. Now, the appendix isn't the only obsolete part of our body. Wisdom teeth aren't that useful either. Yeah, they used to come in handy when our ancestors lost some of their teeth. But the only thing they help us lose now is the money we spend extracting them. In fact, you can easily survive without your appendix, stomach, one kidney, or one lung. <laughs> nice to know we have spare parts. If you never knew you had a personal bodyguard, look deeper. Your liver is your security guard, protecting you from toxins and many other things you don't want to have. It's also pretty indestructible and can even regenerate. Your liver is a very important organ that works a lot and is responsible for 500 individual functions. Up to 10% of it is made of fat. The liver can grow back. Yep, even if you only have half of your liver left, it can still regenerate to its original size. Now, on average, the heart is as big as your fist. It beats 115,000 times and pumps around 2,000 gallons of blood each day. The right lung is bigger than the left one because your body needs to make some room for the heart. You inhale a lot of different types of debris, including 7,000 of your very own skin flakes, and that's only in a day. The stomach is the most important defender of the immune system. Hydrochloric acid in our stomach kills dangerous food toxins, viruses, and bacteria that get in there with the food you eat. This acid can digest even the stomach itself, but the mucous membrane protects it. You can burn calories when you take a hot bath, as many as you would if you took a half-hour walk. You burn somewhere between 100 and 200 calories per hour while standing. Sitting burns 60 to 130, depending on your height, weight, gender, and age. Now, your own body makes mosquito bites swell and itch. A mosquito breaks your skin. Your immune system perceives the insect saliva as a foreign substance, so it starts a special reaction to flush the intruder out of your body. A compound produced by the immune system, called histamine, makes the blood flow faster around the bitten area, and it causes swelling. The histamine also sends a signal to the nearest nerves, which makes the bite itch. Meanwhile, the food on the plane is likely to taste different than on the ground. That's because you lose up to 30% of your taste bud sensitivity due to the dryness and pressure in the cabin. It's especially true about salty and sweet foods. Now, you wouldn't be able to taste food without saliva. Your taste buds have chemoreceptors that recognize different flavors, but they need some liquid for those flavors to bind into their molecules. Also, you can't taste things saliva doesn't dissolve. You can always squeeze in some dessert no matter how much salad, soup, or meat you've eaten before. Your body gets bored of savory tastes, but when you see and smell something sweet, like ice cream, cakes, or chocolate, your brain gets excited. It overrides all fullness signals for pleasure. Plus, your stomach is a flexible organ, and sugar helps it relax and physically make room for dessert. Hey, I rely on that information. The tongue is one of the strongest muscles in your body. This organ contains more than 10,000 taste buds, and each bud is filled with microscopic hairs. Their job is to sense your food, distinguish tastes, and send information to your brain to initiate the appropriate digestion process. During your life, all those tiny bumps and ridges on your tongue create a special individual pattern. That's why experts say that tongue prints are as unique as fingerprints. Your tongue doesn't have separate bitter, sweet, sour, or salty sections for tasting. Each of the 8,000 taste buds you have on the tongue, the roof of the mouth, and even in the throat can detect all the tastes. 
For some people, cilantro may taste similar to soap because the plant contains a chemical used in soap making. But only 4 to 14 percent of the world's population have special genes that can detect it. The masseter is the strongest muscle you have based on its weight. Together with the rest of the jaw muscles, it can close your teeth with a force of 200 pounds on the molars and 55 pounds on the incisors. Your spine has a great memory. It remembers your posture, making it so difficult to change it for the better. You owe goosebumps to your ancestors from many, many, many years ago. Their hair used to stand up to make them look bigger and scarier to foes. Cats hiss and arch their backs for the same reason. Only about 43% of you is actually you. Over 50% of the cells in your body belong to tiny little creatures that mainly live in your gut. Still, even though your own cells are fewer than the microbial ones, there are, on average, about 100 trillion of them in you. See? You're not alone! With this in mind, your own genes are less than half of what you really consist of. If you take all the microbes dwelling within your body and count their genes, you'll find between 2 to 20 million. Now, our height, the shape of our body, and skin color depend a lot on where our ancestors used to live. But we can adapt to new conditions even within our own lifespan. For example, if you move from the plains to the mountains, you'll eventually develop more red blood cells to compensate for the lack of oxygen. And naturally, if you move from a colder climate to a hotter and sunnier one, your skin will get darker to adapt. Our lifespan is programmed within our cells. They constantly review and divide, but they have a sort of internal timer that stops at some point. Some cells also stop reproducing sooner than others. On average, cells cease dividing when we reach the age of 100, if we're that lucky. That means that if we could find a way to trick our cells into turning off the timer, we could potentially live forever and move in with our grandchildren. <laughs> a human mouth is pretty unique. You won't find two identical sets of teeth even among identical twins. That's because the shape depends on how each person is using their jaw. Even the tiniest habits you used to have many years ago, such as lip biting, affect the formation of your teeth and the uniqueness of your dental impression. You've probably noticed that lipstick prints on a napkin or a mirror are always slightly different depending on who left them. Alright, who left the lip prints? Studies of both females and males revealed that lip print patterns for each individual are unique. They didn't reveal any special traits based on the gender factor. The mandible, or the lower jaw, is the only skull bone that isn't fixed to the bone around it. It's attached with connective tissues and muscles. This is what makes it so mobile. You can move it in any direction you like. There are clusters of sensory cells in your tongue. The buds that are closer to the surface are more short-lived. That's the reason you don't have to wait for too long to be able to taste again after burning your tongue. Your fingertips are sensitive, but hundreds of times less so than your lips. Aha! The lips again! There's more nerve cells and connections in your brain than there's stars in the Milky Way. If you decided to count them all, it'd take you 3,000 years. To make it easier for you, you have about 100 billion neurons in there. The brain can't actually feel pain. It does have a pain center, but it doesn't have pain receptors itself. When your head hurts, you can feel it because of the nerves, tissue, and blood cells around your brain. Your RAM, or working memory, is an essential thing that we need to perform almost any everyday activity, including conversations, surfing the net, and even petting your dog. Our strongest and emotional memories are often fake. The central memory gives us the confidence to believe that we remember everything, even though most of the details are made up in our heads. When we laugh, think, look at something, dream, move, or do some other activity with our body, small electrical and chemical signals run between neurons along those connections. And by that, neurons make and send more information than all the phones in the whole world. You're sitting somewhere outside and an insect lands on your leg. Your skin has sensory neurons and they quickly send the message to your brain at an impressive speed, 150 miles per hour. The brain sends back the message to your leg to shake the insect off very fast. And the speed that information travels is even bigger, 200 miles per hour. 
our brain can store only 7 bits in its short-term memory. Don't even try to compare your brain with a phone's capacity, not even the one you had back in 2005. That's why you can't even learn a phone number by heart. Our short-term memory functions just like a chalkboard. You can get some information, but sooner or later, you run out of space. To check your working memory capacity, try this test. Ask a friend to write a list of 10 words and read it to you. Most people recall seven or fewer items from the list. Synesthesia is a special and rare ability when people can taste music or hear colors. Only one in every 2,000 people has it. Five basic senses are taste, touch, sight, sound, and smell. But people have more senses than that. Proprioception is when your body is aware of its parts and their position, even if you don't see them. Like if your arm is behind your back and you know it's there. If you were an octopus, you wouldn't know it. Because these creatures don't know their arms exist if they can't see them. Thermoception is your ability to sense temperature. Equilibrioception is a sense of balance. You also have nociception, which means you can feel pain. Then there's chronoception. That's how you can sense time passing by. There are even more senses found in the animal kingdom, but people don't have those. You can't recall a memory all by itself. When you're trying to think of one detail, like the color of the t-shirt your friend was wearing the other week, you'll remember some other details too. For example, the place where you saw him, things you were talking about. The hippocampus is the part of your brain that stores memories. It usually packs them together, including multiple small details. On average, taste buds last 10 days. One theory says deja vu is some sort of a brain processing lag. Scientists think that it might happen when your brain is transferring information from one side to the other, and there's a split second delay in that process. That means that your brain gets the same information twice and processes it as the event that happened before. It can create an illusion of falling. One of the theories that when you're dozing off, your brain sees the relaxing of your muscles as a sign you're in trouble and really falling. So it sends signals to the muscles to protect you by tensing up. You can physically see your nose, but the brain chooses to ignore it. Otherwise, it would stand in the way of your vision. Plus, it would be out of focus. Brain freeze is an annoying ice cream headache. That's how your brain tells you to slow down and maybe stop eating something that's so cold. People mostly need seven minutes to fall asleep. This time gets shorter if you've just had a large tasty meal. People used to dream in black and white much more than today. That's because they watched black and white TV. Around 12% of people can't dream in color nowadays. All your muscles relax at the same time, right after you've fallen asleep. Your brain thinks you're about to fall asleep and sends quick signals to all of your muscles to awaken them. That's why it sometimes feels like you're literally falling. The hypnic jerk is a twitch you can experience while falling asleep. It's an abrupt muscle movement that comes during the non-REM sleep phase. If you sleep, it doesn't mean all your body sleeps. In fact, sometimes your brain has to work even harder when you're asleep. It needs to process tons of information, and reports usually take a lot of time. By the time you wake up, you'll have forgotten 50% of your latest dream. After 10 minutes, you won't remember 90% of it. When you blush, your stomach lining goes red along with your face. It happens because your sympathetic nervous system is causing an increased blood flow throughout the body. Your hair follicles have the same receptors as your nasal passages. That's why your hair can detect scents, too. Sandalwood can help you develop that superpower. The nose definitely gets a good rest while you're sleeping. Amazingly, your sense of smell basically deactivates at night. You wouldn't even be bothered if there was a terrible smell in your bedroom. No comment. When you age, your brain is gradually reducing in size. By age 75, it's much smaller than at 30 and it starts shrinking by the age of 40. It happens to everyone, and it doesn't affect your mental strength in any way. No matter how hard you try, you'll never be able to tickle yourself. It's because your brain prepares the body for tickling and helps you avoid the typical laughing, <laughs> I'm sorry, reaction. We recognize only purple, blue, green, yellow, and yellow, red colors. Everything else is a combination of these three. 
it's impossible to calculate how many of these combinations the human eye sees because every single person has slight vision differences. But it's about 1 million combinations on average. You see? Heads up! Your skull isn't a single bone. It actually consists of 28 different bones, many of which are fused together to protect your brain. The strongest muscles in your body aren't in your arms or legs. They're in your head. The masseter is the main muscle responsible for chewing, and it needs to be the strongest for you to eat normally. And you know those muscles that allow you to move your ears? Those are temporalis, located above your temples. They also help you to chew your food. Now, we've got two really fast muscles. They control the eyelid closing. In fact, they're the fastest muscles in our body. Eyes are fragile and need protection, so the reflex that protects them needs to be as fast as lightning. These muscles can shut the eyelids in less than a tenth of a second. Our body is made of stardust, really. The more complex elements in our body can only come about through supernovas. The first stars were just gassy lumps that were drawn together and, at some point, started the process of combustion. This finally led to a nuclear reaction in its center. Stars that were right there after the Big Bang were over 50 times bigger than our sun is now. Inside of them, there was a constant process of making the elements, and those large stars were burning their fuel faster. Most of the elements in the human body were formed in those stars over billions of years ago. So you could realistically say that part of you is immortal. Cool, huh? How can spiders survive when they lose a leg? When they're in a dangerous situation and try to run away, they can lose legs and regrow them only a couple months later. They'll survive without any problem because most of the time, their legs come off at break points. Those are joints that contain muscles and constrict, which help spiders minimize blood loss. If they lose a leg at the part that comes before the break point, the spider still sheds it, but it will lose more blood. It will be harder for the animal to recover in this case. Speaking of spiders, have you noticed how they sometimes stay extremely still for a long time? They are motionless while waiting for potential prey to land in their web. When moving around, they waste energy and drive unnecessary attention to themselves. Either a hungry bird praying for a quick snack will see it, or a spider will remain hungry because flies will be less likely to come near their web. When spinning a web, they waste a lot of energy. Even after the web is finished, a spider may have to wait for days or weeks to catch something. So, it's important to save as much energy as possible. Hunting spiders are way more active, but the majority of them are nocturnal predators. They spend their days relaxing, tucked away under a rock or in a nest. Roast potatoes can stay hot for a really long time, and this mostly has to do with the fatty, starchy crust that's like some sort of an insulating layer. When you pre-boil a potato, this causes its starch granules to absorb water and swell until carb molecules seep out to produce this type of thick gel. Since potatoes are in the oven, high temperatures drive off moisture. This makes the gelatinized starch on the outside of the potato chunk and creates a crispy crust. This crust traps the heat inside. The fat from the baking tray collects in cracks too, and the heat-keeping structure stays strong. Birds don't get electrocuted while perching on power lines because it's not voltages that will harm them, but voltage differences. And electricity wouldn't flow without them. So, if you see a bird standing on a single power line at, for example, 35,000 volts, the lack of a voltage difference is something that keeps the animal safe. But if it accidentally extends its wings and touches another power line that's at a different voltage, it won't end well. That's the reason why electricity companies make sure there's plenty of space between the cables. Have you ever wondered why airplane pilots won't try to land on grass when the landing gear doesn't deploy? The grass may seem like a good solution at first because it's soft, true. But the surface will neither be smooth nor even. When pressure is high, landing on grass can lead to unpredictable movements and cause issues such as structure formation. That happens because of bouncing and unequal pressure. This can even result in fuel leakage and prevent the doors from opening. Bald heads tend to be shiny, even though the skin elsewhere on the human body isn't. Most of our skin is covered with tiny hairs that give it some sort of velvety peach fuzz look. 
With male pattern baldness, the hair follicles tend to shrink and turn into skin cells, which means there's no hair there at all. And the scalp is especially shiny due to the sebaceous glands. They produce and secrete some kind of oily matter that protects our skin. Sebaceous glands are located all across our skin, but the scalp has way more of them. So, this oil coats the skin, which is why it turns into a more reflective surface. House cats will rarely meow at one another, but they become chatty with humans, and this could be related to domestication. The process of taming cats and keeping them as pets started nearly 10,000 years ago. Before that, cats were pretty much loners. They rarely encountered other cats, so they didn't even have to use their voices to communicate with each other. Instead, they communicated through their sense of smell, which included things like rubbing against a certain object, for example, a tree. So they didn't even have to come face to face with other members of their species to send a message. And that's how they mostly communicate today as well. But humans don't have such a good sense of smell as cats, so these foxy creatures had to think of a way to send us a message and still get what they wanted from us, which turned out to be meowing. If you're planning a day trip to a desert, for example, the Sahara in North Africa, you're going to want to bring good sunscreen and a lot of water, of course, but also a snug sleeping bag if you're planning to spend the night there too. Deserts really become cold during the night. In the Sahara, Temperatures go from an average high of 100 degrees Fahrenheit during the day to 25 degrees during the night. Such dramatic change happens because of two main factors, humidity and sand. Sand doesn't retain heat that well. When light and heat from the sun reach a desert, sand grains from the top layer absorb heat. But they release it back into the air relatively quickly. So during the day, the sand radiates the energy coming from the sun, which eventually heats the air and leads to extremely high temperatures. And during the night, the sand is quickly losing heat once again. But this time, there's no sunlight that would reheat the desert. That leaves the sand colder than before and leads to such low temperatures. In arid deserts such as the Atacama Desert in Chile and the Sahara, the humidity is extremely low. That means the amount of water vapor in the air is almost zero. Unlike sand, water does well to store heat. Water vapor in the air traps heat close to the ground. It's like you cover the ground with a huge blanket. That way, you stop it from dissipating into the atmosphere. Also, when the air has a high level of humidity, it requires more energy to heat up. That means it takes more time for that same energy to disappear and for the surroundings to get colder. Since there's almost no humidity in deserts, such areas can both quickly heat up and cool down. If you microwave water for tea, it will taste worse than when it's made with a kettle. That's because the temperature of the liquid is the main factor for a good tea. Water should reach a rolling boil before you pour it over tea leaves, whether they're loose or bagged. It's an easy thing to do with tea kettles, both the electric and stovetop varieties. When the burner or the electric heating element is on, the water at the bottom of the vessel warms up. As it's getting hotter, water through the rest of the kettle comes to the boiling point. A microwave doesn't heat from the bottom up. It creates electromagnetic waves that randomly jump around the box. You probably notice when you try to reheat leftovers, they end up partially frozen in some spots and extremely hot in others. The same will happen with water because it's hard to control microwave energy. Overheated liquid won't be good for tea either. When water goes above 212 degrees Fahrenheit, which is the boiling point for water, it can destroy the compounds that give a tea its specific flavor. Have you ever wondered why those electrical plugs most Americans use have holes in the prongs? The story dates back to the early 20th century when Harvey Hubble Jr. invented different types of electrical plugs. He started with the detachable electric plug, which was the first ever of that type. Some of his designs had prongs with indents, those aligned with tiny bumps inside the electrical sockets. Such an indent and bump system secured the prongs in place after people would insert a plug into a socket. At some point, these indents gave way to holes, which worked in the same way. But that's just part of the story. Most of the modern outlets don't even have bumps anymore. They keep plugs from falling out of the wall by using friction and pressure. Today, some manufacturers insert a rod through all the holes in a line of prongs, 
That's how they lock them in place while encasing them in plastic. Some also say the holes save metal, which cuts costs of manufacturing in the long term. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos.